guys. Um, how's it going? Uh, it's been quite a long time, so um, I am back again, and I wanted to get a little podcast in. Um, this is going to be choppy because I'm going to have to do it in a few different segments, um, which I will get to later, the reasons why. But pff, honestly, I'm just putting this together really quick. I don't even know what episode this is, like 16 or 17? But um, yeah, it's again, it's been a while since I've been able to podcast. Um, and ugh, that's because there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, as you'll see, um, I'm in a different location and also you can hear my daughter in the background. Um, again, like I said, it's going to be really choppy, but I definitely wanted to get something out there for you. Um, and I'm sorry, speaking of choppy, if the camera's shaky, I'm actually just holding it. It's not even in a setup. Um, and I only have a couple minutes right now because my husband's going to be back <laughs> and I can podcast with my daughter around because she doesn't really quite understand what I'm doing, but, um, but it's kind of weird podcasting with him around, even though he doesn't care. Um, she can't find Max and Ruby, so <laughs> I think she's trying to watch something on Netflix right now. Um, I have a few finished objects, um, and I'm, I, ha I have to apologize because I'm really um, v extremely disorganized um, because of everything that's going on. And I don't even know what I had done last time. Um, again, I'm going to get my stuff together, so I'm going to finish this video later on tonight. Um, I'm just going to get this started right now, though. <laughs> so anyway, all that. Welcome back. Um, welcome back to any returning viewers. And for new viewers, thank you so much for um, stopping by to check me out and spending a few minutes to chat with me. Um, and it was funny, I was thinking this the other day that um, I've thought of other podcasters that I used to watch like before I started podcasting and they'd say, oh, it's been so nice chatting with you and seeing you. And I'd be watching it and I'd be like, well, they don't see me. They're just talking to a camera. But um, now that I, I podcast, I totally, I totally understand where they're coming from because it is so exciting to podcast. And like, yeah, right now I'm talking to a camera. But, um, hey, you want to bring that over here? And I'll help you. Um, I am, I am talking to a camera right now, but I know people are watching and I've talked to my viewers and I've gotten new viewers and it's so exciting. So I do feel like I'm chatting with you. So I understand what they're talking about. Um, bring it over here. I'll help you. Um, yeah. Sorry about that. I had to find Max and Ruby for my daughter. <laughs> Um, if you have kids, you probably know the show, Max and Ruby. It's really annoying. I can't stand it. Actually, I like the show. Not a big fan of Ruby. Um, anyway, so, um, yeah, sorry about that. So, um, it is April, today is April, I believe it's the 19th. I think Wednesday, April 19th, 2018. I almost said 17. And, um, actually it's more like January, <laughs> but it, it, um, it feels like January. Everybody seems to be having the same, um, winter or summer. I mean, ugh, spring. Um, it's a very cold, rainy, snowy April. And we're almost, we're at the end of April. And, um, it's, sorry, <laughs> my hair's looking really weird today, sorry. Um, it's, it just, yeah, it, April's supposed to be warmer and it's just not warm at all. Um, not enjoyable, unfortunately, but here we are. Eventually spring will come, I think. Um, so, yeah, and it's, it's just another cold day. <laughs> and if it's not cold, then it's rainy. Like, we had an ice storm this weekend, um, so I, I live, I'm actually, I'm a Canadian. I'm a, no, I'm not Canadian. I'm an American that are living in Canada. I live in, um, Ontario, Southwestern Ontario. Um, not too far from Toronto. Um, not too far from the States either, like close to the line, like an hour and a half from, from the border. Not too far, but I am from America. I, um, am living in Canada now though, because my husband is Canadian and we live here because he owns a business. Um, I actually was thinking that, um, I know that when I watch podcasts, I really like to learn about the people. I'm, I'm not just there for the knitting. 
And I think a lot of people are like that. It's nice to get to know the podcasters as actual people, like with families and lives and personalities. And um, I realize I don't really talk about myself that much. I don't think maybe I do. Like you might, you've gotten to know me and stuff, but I don't really talk too much about my life. Like, you know, I'm from America, um, you know, I'm married. Um, I live in Canada now. <laughs> I knit. Um, but I was thinking maybe I should talk about myself a little bit more. I don't know. You guys want to hear about my life a little bit? Um, some of it's kind of private, <laughs> as is anybody's, really. There's certain things that um, I just don't share, um, as you can understand. But um, there's a lot of stuff that I don't mind sharing. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I, I, like, I just don't know, like, what I've really told you about myself, like what I like, what I do. Um, I don't know. Should I share it now? <laughs> or should I wait to hear from you guys to let you know, let me, you guys can let me know what you think or what you want to know about me. Does that make sense? Um, I mean, I can tell you a little bit. I, like I said, I grew up, I grew up in Massachusetts near Boston. Um, parents, my parents are still together, um, which is awesome they are the best. Um, my, they, and they all, they still live in Massachusetts. I have an older brother. He's a year and a half older than me. I have a younger sister. She's five years younger than me and we're like best buds. Um, I never see her because she still lives in Massachusetts too. Um, but I talk to her a lot. We text all the time and talk and I love her so much. Um, I miss her so much. And, um, yeah, I just, I grew up there till I was an adult and then I moved down to Rhode Island. Um, but I, let's see, I've, I don't anymore, but I pl used to play guitar. The only reason I don't is just, it's gotten really, life has changed a lot in the last like five or six years. So I really didn't have a chance to, um, I haven't had a chance to like really pick up the guitar and concentrate on it and, m at all. But I, I do have a very, very basic, basic knowledge. Um, playing the guitar. I love music. My dad taught himself to play guitar when he was in Vietnam and he's a really great singer and great songwriter. He's very creative and artistic. Um, so I grew up listening to him, um, playing guitar. Like I would fall asleep at night and hear him downstairs playing guitar. And he, he's a big Beatles fan and he passed that on to me. So a lot of the songs by the Beatles and, um, like Bob Dylan and just like a lot of that era of music, like the sixties and seventies, a lot of that music is what he played. And that's what I grew up learning, um, listening to. So, um, a few years ago, he and I played together. We used to play guitar together and just like have practice sessions a lot, but, um, that was actually, that was quite a while back. <laughs> um, so I, I would still love to, um, play guitar. It just right now is not the time I'm too busy knitting. <laughs> um, I also like to read. But that's also something I can't, I'm not magical. There's the magical people who can knit and read and I can't do that. Um, so I don't do that. Um, but I do read. I, I love to read. I have lots of books. And um, along with reading, I love to write. I've been writing since I was a little kid. Um, for some reason, I've never gotten anything published, but I've written like four books. <laughs> um, I just don't know how to do it, like how to, how to pursue it. Um, I did pursue agents. I wasn't really good at pursuing it and being pushy and um, I didn't really know what to do. So I kind of just stopped it. There was a lot of other stuff that got in the way at the time, but um, I still write sometimes. I, my dream was always to be a writer and I just never really have gotten to that point yet, but, um, but I still do it. I'm still very creative. I've always been a very creative person um, and that's that has um, carried over into, the, into my knitting. Um, like I will take a pattern and just change it. <laughs> so that is actually something like I've, I've always done that. Like I, I end up making my own patterns and that's why I've started writing my, like writing up my own stuff. Um, I did release my first sock pattern a couple back a couple months ago, the firmament, firmament socks. And I'm actually working on another one. Um, later on in the podcast, I'll show you that one. I'm actually looking for test knitters at this point. Um, I'm looking for it to get test knit soon so I can release it soon. And I got quite a few ideas up my sleeves. So yeah, I like to, uh, create my own stuff. Um, got to start small, but it's something, it's really exciting. So, um, so yeah, that's me. I also love to cook. Um, which I've talked about food in the past, so 
I have had to completely relearn how to cook um, since becoming vegan, vegetarian three years ago. And that's been fun, actually. And I learned a lot about like flavors and foods and techniques and stuff. So um, that is, uh, yeah, that is definitely something that I've always loved. I love cook. I love prep. I love cooking. I love eating it. I love feeding other people. So that is that. Um, and then like, then there's my, I'm not really sharing my adulthood, I guess right now, but I'll leave it at that. And you guys can let me know if you want to hear more about me. Um, as I go on in podcasting, you'll learn more about me and that's just the way it naturally progresses. But like, I'm not trying to keep anything back. Um, not really. <laughs> Uh, like I'm not running from the law or anything. Um, just I just don't share a lot of my life. Um, just because I talk about about knitting and I end up getting really chatty about all that stuff. So I just forgot. Um, so my husband and I recently had our five year anniversary this month. No, last month. We didn't do anything, unfortunately. Like it really kind of sucks because we never we didn't have a wedding. And I was hoping that, well, we were both hoping that this year would be, like, we would be able to have something, but ugh, there's just a lot going on, and I haven't been able to do that. So, um, I think I'm gonna talk about what's been going on, but I'm gonna put it at the end of the video, so it's, in that way, it's gonna be choppy, because, um, when I actually record, like, my works in progress and finished objects and stuff that's on the needles, it'll be later on tonight, so you'll see me later, and then you'll see me back again now um, yeah so I'm gonna talk about what later on uh, I'll put it in the video later uh, but I will tell you now about what's been going on in our lives hey okay so um, it's actually kind of funny having recorded earlier and now coming back later it's a lot easier to start the video because I feel like I'm more in practice but um uh, sorry if it is a little choppy to you. I know I keep apologizing for that. Um, I know people are always like, oh, don't apologize for it. It's not a big deal. Um, but in case it bothers you, I'm really sorry. Uh, but now I have a few minutes. It's later on in the day. Um, hopefully the lighting is okay. I'm not really sure how it's going to translate on camera. I'm looking at the, the LCD screen and um, I don't know. It's kind of dim in here at this point. So um yeah, I don't know. Again, I'm sorry. Um, but I do have a few minutes to share with you um, some of my finished objects and works in progress from last time, uh, since the last time that I recorded. And I'm really sorry. I have the craziest setup right now. Um, it, you don't even want to know. So if I shake the camera, I'm really sorry. And if you have... I don't know if, if I move too much, if there's like a reflection behind me, um, my monitor is on and I don't have a curtain on this window right behind me. So if you happen to see the monitor, um, or a light behind me, that's what that is. Um, okay. So I don't remember how many socks I, um, I knit la since last time. Um, I know I've done quite a few projects and of course my projects have been socks but I'm actually just checking something really quick because it might help me to see. Um, yeah, I know for sure I've knit one, two, three. Okay, yeah, I think three since the last time because I think I showed you my sister-in-law's socks. They were a pair of the uh, Regia per Perfect socks um, and so I gifted those to her. She knew about them. They weren't really a gift. So that was like the last thing I think I showed, my last unfinished object. So since then, um, I did knit a pair of socks that were on the needles. Oh, and I don't have them with me because they are still packed away. Um, but they are made, if you remember, if you watched the last podcast, they are made out of the Red Heart Soul yarn and it is a, a, a wool nylon blend and they're really soft. They're um, surprisingly really nice like only because I only say surprisingly because Red Heart's usually like acrylic and plasticky and not the best quality but the, the sock yarn I really liked it and they came out really cute they're very rainbowy um, and like not even in stripes the the color changes are so um, quick that they're not there's not even like an entire stripe to go around for most of the colors I think so it's very colorful sock which is great that's totally up my alley um, and then I started a um, 
don't mind me, I'm kind of, I don't really have a great setup yet. But um, then I started another pair of socks with, um, ooh, it's a Patton's Croy yarn and I don't have the ball band, but it's a Patton's Croy. So if you've used Patton's Croy and you've looked around at their, their sock yarn, you've probably seen this color. I wish I knew the name of it. And I started by knitting out, uh, uh, designing a new pair of um, socks for, that I was going to write up a pattern for. But um, if you see my Instagram, <laughs> I ended up ripping almost an entire sock out after, after not only after knitting almost an entire sock, but after having ripped back quite a few times with that sock. Um, it was like a chevron pattern on the front of it. Um, and once I got down past the heel flap, and then I was knitting the, the, the foot of the, the sock, it just wasn't working. So I, I said, you know what, forget this. It's, sorry about that. Um, it's not a big deal. I knit fast. <laughs> I'll just rip it out. So I, I did take a video of me and I put it on Instagram of me ripping it out. And um, it's a little heart wrenching, but you know, it was for the best and it wasn't that bad. So I ended up making a plain pair of socks with um, them. And this is the yarn. These are the socks. Um, there's, if the color is, if the, um, the lighting is off and the colors are off, they're, um, and there's hair on them. They're like a turquoise blue. There's gray. There's some like tan brown. There's some dark, like a charcoal. There's some light colors, like, like be light colors, uh, lighter, like a beige, almost like an off white beige. Um, I hate that word beige. Um, but mostly, oh, and it's got like the little, um, you can see the, like, the little, it's like a self patterning yarn, like almost like a fair isle. I don't know if you would call it that. Anyway, the, these are, these are those. <laughs> They're very baggy. Um, I actually have remedied this recently. Um, you know how like you do things, you, you keep doing things and then you learn from your experiences and then you're like, oh, let's fix this. And, um, so I've recently fixed, um, the way I knit socks and I will talk about that in a little bit. Um, but yeah, so there's this pair. Funny thing about the pair that I was just talking about that's made with the red heart sole and then these, both pairs of socks, because I ripped back to the, um, the cuff and I didn't want to redo the cuff over again because I hate knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. Um, I hate ribbing. Um, I dropped a stitch in both pairs of socks and I didn't realize it until, well, when I was picking, like doing the gusset on the sock after the heel flap, that's when I realized I was a stitch short and it wasn't even on both sides. And I was like, oh, okay. So I just made up for it. Not a big deal. When I was sewing in the ends and I think it was only on one sock for both of them. Yeah. On one sock for both pairs, both pairs of them, but only one of each one sock from each pair. I dropped a stitch all the way up at, <laughs> at the top. So I was like, you've got to be kidding me. But that, then I realized after the second pair, I'm like, how did I do that with two pairs of socks in a row? It was because I ripped back, but didn't quite get my lifeline in there or get my, I didn't put a lifeline in. I didn't get my needles back in there and I didn't notice and I didn't count my stitches for whatever reason. Somehow those stitches stayed there the whole time. So it's pretty sticky, hard, like rough wearing yarn anyway. So somehow those stitches held in there until I finished the entire sock. Like I'm throwing my socks in a bag, taking them out in the car, um, all over the house, all over the city. <laughs> like those, so that's pretty great that the, that they held up. I ended up just tacking it down when I, um, did the, when I was weaving in ends. Crazy, huh? Um, Okay, so I'm going to take those off the blocker still. I actually just found these today, this pair, and I wish I had, th I, I wish I had thought to bring out the other pair, the Red Heart ones, because they came out really cute. Um, I'm really happy with them. These are so big, and I've noticed lately, I, I don't know if my, um, my tension has loosened up. Usually I'm a pretty tight knitter, but um, I don't know. They, my socks seem a lot bigger. Um, I'll just have to talk about that now, because I'll probably forget about it. I've been knitting my socks on, I think they're US size three. So I'm not sure what size that is in millimeters. I know it's, what is it like 3.5 millimeter? I don't know, but, or maybe the so the US size two and a half. Anyway, they're my Chiogus um, and I have three pairs of them, but I've been knitting my socks with a 64 stitch count on those needles and they've been coming out fine. Um, 
However, they do look a lot bigger than I think they were before. Um, so I think my tension is, is looser, which is really weird. And I don't really like that because I like it nice and tight. So I did drop down to um, knitting on a pair of circulars. I'm looking at them right now, but I'll show them to you later because there's a project on them. Um, some, some circulars that I got years and years ago because I took a sock knitting, one sock knitting class where you would um, knit Magic Loop. And this was like... 10 or 11 years ago I took this class with my mom and with a friend and I don't know the name of the needles I want to say they're they're like Susan Bates but I think I don't really know but they're nice they're they're like they're hardy um, they're comfortable to work with and they have an okay join it's a little rough at the join but they're not bad they're and they're not as long as my other um, magic loops so I couldn't do as my other circular as my chagos um, so I couldn't do two pairs on them um, like two at a time socks, so I just do one at a time because I like a lot of slack in my in my um, cable. But I've been using those because they're a. I don't know what size they are. I think they're US size two, but they're two point seven five millimeter. I know that for sure. And they're a little bit smaller than my Chiagos, so they seem to be doing like a nice tighter sock. And I have mostly my socks I knit for myself. In fact, I don't knit them for anybody else. Um, and I have skinny ankles, skinny calves, skinny feet. Like, I have a very, very high arch, so I need, I don't want baggy socks, I want them to fit really tight, but I don't want them too tight. So, I, I've, yeah, I went down at the needle size lately, which sucks because I have three pairs of the Chiagu needles, but I can always do like a 56 count on the Chiagu, so that's fine. Um, so, for whatever reason, I don't know why that's happening, but it is, I guess, just, yeah, it's just a natural thing. It just happens, and I might go back to knitting tighter, I don't know. So, I got those socks, and then I did a, um... A, a test knit recently um, from somebody that I follow on Instagram. Her name is Just a Dose of Love. And their, her Ravelry, I believe, is... Mm, I just pulled it up. Hang on one second. They are the Everest sock pattern. They just came out. They're just released April 2018 by Mallory Codron. And um, she's got quite a few pairs of really cool patterns already. Um, so I did a test knit for her Everest socks. That was really fun. I realized I've never done a test knit. Um, I've done like knit alongs and stuff, but I never did a test knit. So I did. And okay, so my sock blockers seem like they're huge, but then I put my socks on them and my socks are like baggy on them. I don't know what's going on. Like I said, I'm going down. I'm going to from now on be going down a needle size or, do, or going down... Um, eight stitches in my stitch count if I use the Chiyogus, but these are the Everest socks. See how loose they are? These are the Everest socks, um, and I have two of them, and there's just like a really cool texture pattern. I hope you can see um, on the front of it, and I did a, a regular heel flap and gusset, and yeah, that was a really fun test knit. She did a great job writing them, writing the pattern. Um, it was a really nice pattern. That She does the toe a little bit different than I do. And it's a little bit pointier. Um, she graphs less stitches together, I believe. I think that's what I remember. Um, it was a really easy pattern, but totally worth purchasing. Um, so yeah, Ma Ma Mallory Codron, and she's on Ravelry. They're the Everest socks, and she's just a dose of love, all one word, on Instagram. So check her out. She's cool. And I think she follows me too, so that's fun. Um, yeah, and the sock, the... Yarn that I knit these with was Patton's Croy, and I believe it was, one second, there's so many, brown, yeah, brown rose marl, and the ones that I knit, that I just showed you with the turquoise and the self-striping and the self-patterning are is also Patton's Croy socks, and that was in the turquoise jack, jacquard, 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 jacquard. <laughs> Say that again, Kamiko. Yeah. Um, anyway, those are the colors. So, yeah, another Patton's Quay yarn. They're very um, rough. They're t they're fine on the feet. They're nice and toasty, warm on the feet. But they're a um, a thicker, more workhorse work workhorse yarn. Um, and I've just been picking up um, like a, a um, yarn here and there at the at a store where they sell like everything, all the junk they also sell yarn too and every time I go in there I'm like yeah, I gotta pick up a, a pair of um, a couple of balls of sock yarn 
and they only have Patton's Croy for sock yarn, or they have like the kind that's acrylic, and I don't want to knit acrylic socks because I had a bad experience. My first, well, no, not my first pair of socks, but I did, I did knit a pair of socks. I don't even remember the brand name, but it was just they were acrylic, cool colors and everything, but it just, yeah, nylon and wool for me for socks or 100% wool. Anyway, so that's those are my finished objects. Um, yeah, that's that's what I've finished lately. <laughs> And I also have that, I'm going to go get it. The, um, so I'm just going to go on to works in progress right now, <laughs> but I will be right back. I am going to run and get my, um, that scrappy bohemian blanket that I've been working on. Hang on one second. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> I could have edited that out, but I didn't want to stop the camera again. Like I said, it's a crazy little setup I have going on here. So I have this bohemian looking like, what's that store? Um, anthropology looking blanket, scrappy blanket that I'm knitting from all my old scrap yarn from socks last year. And sorry. And, um, I started out by like just doing a few, like four rows of a couple colors knit together. So it gives you this marled look. Then I started, um, just knitting through the rest of the, the scrap piece of sock, like the ball, the scrap ball of sock and doing a magic knot. Um, so that it, I'm just using up all my yarn basically. So, and I also don't have as many um, ends to weave in at the end, but I've gotten quite a few rows done since the last time I showed you. Um, but I have been really busy, so I didn't get as much done as I would like, but this is what I have so far and it's curling up at the bottom. And again, my lighting really stinks, but that's what I have now. And then here's like a nice unpuckered section. So there's that. Um, hopefully it's zooming in on me over here. I hope it's not blurry. Um, sorry. But so yeah, that's, that's what's going on here. I've, I've done a, a little bit more of that kind of really like plowing through this yarn, but I got a lot of freaking scrap yarn here, like a lot of soft yarn that I, I just had. It's nice to be using it up, but it's not being used up fast enough. Um, so that is a continuing work in progress. Um, and then another thing I'm working on right now. And like I said, for me, this is monogamous, <laughs> only working on a couple things at a time because, um, I like to have a bunch of stuff going at the same time. And I'm really sorry that I keep bending down, but I lost what I wanted to show you. Oh man. Sorry about this. Where's my, how do you lose a sock that was right in front of you? Oh, it's right next to me. Um, since I podcast last, actually, I have been working on this and I think I showed you once, but, um, I made this bag. Um, I don't have a handle on it or anything. I think I kind of forgot to do that when I was making it and I was kind of in a rush because I wanted to get it done. But um, it has like a little um, tab here that has a, a hook on it that you can <laughs> put stuff on, I guess. And then I have a little zipper pull that I attach to it. It's a little um, daisy. And that, yeah, it's just this cool little bag with the inside of it is just polka dots and there's all my garbage inside. Um, it's a good size. So you, if it's up next to me, you can kind of see how big it is. I guess you call it like a medium size. Um, it was, it, it came out nice, not the best. Um, anybody who makes bags, I totally like, I, I really wish I liked to sew. Um, I kind of do as I'm doing it. I kind of like to do it, but I suck at it. <laughs> I'm not, I don't have the patience for it, which is funny because I do have the patience for knitting. But it's hard. I think I, it's not hard. It's just, there's a lot to it that I'm not really interested in getting right. So it's, there's a lot to, um, sewing project bags. So I prefer to buy my project bags. I wish I was the person that liked to make them cause I would totally sew project bags cause I know people like them and they, other people can't sew, but I need project bags. So I did buy some fabric and I made that one and I'll probably make like, make like a tote bag. I kind of want to make like little notions pouches and stuff just for myself, my own use, because I always have a hard time finding project bags that I like online. So anyway, I've been using that bag. Um, and I just throw it in my purse, which is also a bigger garbage can than that. <laughs> Cause you know, mom life. 
Um, now, I talked about this earlier, I think, in the part that I recorded earlier. Wow, my sock blockers are getting beat up. This is a pattern. This is a pattern that I wrote up myself. A, yet another new um, pattern that's going to be released soon. I have some test knitters. I actually just put the call out for test knitters today and I got some responses. So um, I'm excited about that. I'll be doing that soon. So this will probably be out near the end of May. But real quick. Um, also, this is in, um, sorry, teaser. Also in Patton's Croy. And I'm actually knitting these on the 2.75 millimeter needles. And the colorway is Patton's Croy Flax. So it's like a brownish gray, brown, gray, beige color, I think. And I also picked this up at that junkie store that sells yarn. And this one is similar to my other sock pattern, but the, but instead of having the cool vintagey pattern going down the back of the sock, I have adjust, I have the pattern just going down the front of the sock. And, um, there's that. And then you can see, like, if you were knitting this on, like a, a more variegated yarn or like a, uh, something with more color to it, you would see the way the yarn actually is in the back, but then you'd have like a little pattern in the front. And these, these are, um, they're still big on these sock blockers. So maybe these sock blockers are, are a lot smaller than I thought, but, um, the pattern, if you see my Instagram, you'll see the pattern, like when it's tight over your leg, it looks really cool. It's these little, um, I should know my shapes at my age, but I don't. I, I can't think of them, the name of the shape, but I'll, I'll try to put it on my arm so you can see it in case you didn't see it on Instagram. But that is the, um, even then it's not, it's, sorry, my camera cut out again. I, don't, I think it's like a rhombus shape. I don't know, but it's um, alternating and yeah, so that's my, my sock. Um, and then I stopped the pattern so that, I don't even know why I said that. <laughs> anyway, but okay, so what I did, so yeah, this is being test knit right now. I did this sock a little different than normal because um, I, I hate knitting the cuff, but I do it, obviously. I do. I usually do like 20 rows, which I, give, I think it gives me a couple inches of um, a cuff. This time I only did 10 rows, and I wasn't sure how it would look, so I was like, oh, let me try it out. And I did. I did it that way, and I think it came out, I think it looks good with just the 10 rows. It's not terrible. And I learned, I uh, purchased the Fish Lips Kiss Heel. Finally, finally, I tried it. I, I got it a while ago and I finally tried it. I was very afraid to try something new, which is weird because I like plunge into some stuff and I'm all for change a lot of the time, but sometimes I, I am a little fearful at the same time, like internally. And I did, I did the, um, the Fish Lips Kiss Heel and what everybody says that any other podcaster that you've watched or any other knitter that you've listened to or watched or talked to or whatever, they'll say, um, oh yeah, it's like 16 pages of a pattern and you only need like two pages. And I do my, my socks cuff down. So I barely needed any of the instructions, but I was totally fine with reading it. Um, oh my goodness. What an awesome pattern. If you have not gotten Fish Lips Kiss and you haven't tried it, go ahead and try it. Um, it's, it's so, like, I can't even explain, like, you have to do it. I hate, I love making socks, but I think the biggest thing I hate about making them is the, I don't mind hitting, I don't mind knitting the heel flap, and then when you do the, um, you round it out for the bottom of the heel, and then the gusset, I don't mind that. Oh, no, before you get to the gusset, picking up the blinking stitches. <laughs> my mom's watching. I have to watch my language. <laughs> um, picking up the stitches to get for the gusset. I hate that. I absolutely hate it. It's not hard. I hate it. I hate it. I can't even tell you. And then decreasing to do that, it takes so much extra time. So the, this fish lips kiss heel, it looks really weird. It does. I showed my husband. Like It's like but it works. It's like, if you look at any of your socks that you purchase from the store, they don't have a heel flap like the, like the, the kind that I knit. They just have the, the sides that like meet and they go in a diagonal on your heel. And that's what this is. And 
it for me it fits great I don't think I've heard anybody complain about it um, it's so easy so quick um, and like you don't have to be like amazing universe knitter and it looks great it looks great when they're on um, again these socks are a little baggy I don't think I lost weight in my leg. What is going on? They were, they're still a little baggy on me. No, but they fit. They fit. I, ha I think I just have to go down a needle size. I think my, my tension is um, just a lot looser than it used to be. And it's still pretty tight, but it's looser than I would like. Um, yeah. So, fish lips kiss heel. Do it. Just do it. Do it. Just do it. Um, so that is currently about to be test knit. Um, and I'm, I'm finishing up the second of that pair right now. I'm like on the very end here. And since I only have one pair of these needles, these 2.75 millimeter, I am itching to cast on another pair of socks, um, soon, like now, but I only have like that much left of these socks. So I'll finish them tonight. Um, I think that was actually lighting up my face. Ooh, that nice blue glow from my monitor. That looks great. <laughs> um... Yeah, I am itching to cast on a new pair of socks, but I have to finish these. So I'm, I'm actually getting good at finishing everything. I never used to finish stuff. So I'm, I'm good, good girl, Kamiko. Yay. <laughs> um, yeah, so I am going to cast on, let's see. I grabbed this today out of some stuff, some of my stuff that's still packed away. Um, I showed you this back in the summer, uh, the Regia Perfect in the color 07118 and this makes two pairs of matching socks so I can't wait to make these and they are rainbow socks so I'm excited about that and I have a bunch of ideas up my sleeve not even ideas they're actually on paper um, I didn't actually write the pattern out but I know exactly what I'm gonna be doing so I have a set of patterns um, that's gonna be coming out soon uh, I have to make them and get them testing it but they're right here they're like coming out so I'm excited about that. I'm super excited about knitting socks with fish lips kiss heel now. I'm just going to be knitting all the fish lips kiss heels all the time now. Um, and I have a project coming up in this yarn, which I must have lost the ball band, but I remember showing it to you not that long ago on the podcast. I think I got it in like October, November, and I don't know what happened to the ball band. I don't know. Um, but it's like aqua blues and like a light indigo and like almost like a gray blue. Oh, I love it. So I know exactly what I'm doing with these. It's a special um, pattern that I'm writing up. And it's based on the color of the of this yarn. So I, um, yeah, I have quite a few things coming up. Coming up, yeah. Um. Alright, sorry, I got a phone call. <laughs> um, so, I don't really remember what I was talking about, but um, I showed you all my works in progress, um, and I have some stuff coming up. Um, I actually, I, okay, so um, we have since moved, <laughs> and everything's still, well, kind of packed away, and I will get into that in the segment after this because I pre-recorded that, um, so I'm not going to talk too much about it, but um, I had an office <laughs> and um, in our where we were living and now I don't and that office was kind of like my pride and joy <laughs> and it, I never actually because we only lived there a little over a year I never actually got it to the point that um, to my what I ideal in my head what I what I ideally wanted it to be in my head does that make sense um, but it was getting there um, I, I, yeah, I wanted it to be really girly and bright and everything. And it was girly and bright, but um, I it was still not as organized as I would have liked it to be. And if we had stayed there, I probably would be organizing it now. But it was kind of a good thing because then I got to go through all my stuff. And I've really built up quite a stash of yarn. Probably not as big of a stash as other people or as nice of a stash because I've really only in the past couple of years um, been collecting and very, very carefully collecting yarns because... Um, I'm just very wallet friendly, <laughs> but I, I appreciate, um, you know, quality yarns. And so I do want those in my collection and that's 
like all I will buy now is qu good quality yarns, like um, not to be snobby, but like brand names and like good good names, good dye, like good great indie dyers. Um, not even they don't necessarily have to be indie dyers, but just a good quality yarn that feels good because you're knitting with it. And you're like like when I was knitting a lot of my socks in the Patents Croy, I noticed that my finger like right here because I um, I don't know if you've ever seen me knit, but when I do knit. I wrap it like, how do we do this? Okay, basically, I wrap it twice like that around my, my needle, my, around my finger. And it sli it's sliding across my finger. Can you see that? And it was using the Harb Patents Croy yarn, which is still a great yarn because it's wool and, and nylon. I had this dry, like my, my um, finger was all dry and it still is. Um, maybe it's gotten used to it. I don't know. Maybe the weather's a little bit less dry now, now that winter's kind of over. Um, but anyway, knitting with a, a nice, like soft yarn, um, it makes a better garment or item or accessory or whatever. It looks better. It feels better while you're knitting and the finished product is, is nicer. Um, even like I was just thinking, these, um, this yarn, this Patton's Crow yarn that I used for my new pattern, my design, smells sheepy. Wh and, like, I don't know, I don't, I, I'm not a country girl, but I don't, I mean, I've been on, a, I've been to a farm, like everybody, you kind of just know that sheepy farmy smell, and these, they smell sheepy, and I've never had that experience with, with Patton's Crow before. I don't know if it's because it's less dyed, it doesn't have colors in it and stuff. I don't know, but I was, <laughs> I noticed like every time I knit with it, I'm like, I smell like, I smell sheep, that woolly, sheepy smell. And I had my husband smell it and he was like, yeah, that's, that does smell. That's pretty gross. And, um, yeah. So anyway, getting back to, I had an office, I don't have an office, but I was able to take stock of like everything that I do have. I have built up quite a nice stash and I kind of want to hoard it away, but it's like, don't hoard it away, make stuff with it. And mostly it's fingering yarn. So I do have plans for socks and everything and some sock designs, but, um, I do want to make a, like maybe like a two, three, four, um, shawls that are longer, not so deep, but like longer so I can wear them as a scarf and like some, I have some really beautiful, beautiful yarn. So I should be doing that soon. I don't, I'm always watching other podcasters trying to see, um, what, what they're knitting, obviously, cause they'll share their, the patterns that they're knitting lately. And, um, and I'm always looking for something that I'd really like, or I'll just like be looking through Ravelry. But um, if anybody has any suggestions on a great shawl that I could um, knit, I would love to hear from you. Um, one second. I would love if you would let me know. <laughs> My cat just like disappeared under the table and I don't know where he went. I found him. Um, yeah, I would love some suggestions for like a crescent shaped type shawl. Maybe I just need to design my own because I do have kind of like a design bug lately um, and I do, I am interested in designing a shawl. Um, not very experienced in shawl knitting, like I haven't done a lot, but I've done a, like, I think I've shown you like two or three. Um, oh yeah, and speaking of that, my Stephen West Speckle and Pop shawl. I have not gotten back to, so my needle broke and it was, uh, um, I don't even remember the name of the needle now. The Nova, the Platinum, Knitter's Pride Plat Platina or Platinum or something. And I actually got in touch with Knitter's Pride or whoever the manufacturer is. And they said, go bring it to the um, store that you, you bought it from and they'll replace it for you. But I haven't gotten back, I haven't gotten back to that store yet. Um, it was kind of out of the way anyway. Now it's really out of the way <laughs> since we've moved. So I'm, I'm sitting here with my, my great Stephen West shawl is sitting here almost done with a great pair of ne or a set of needles on it that I can't even use, that they're no good anymore, which is really irritating. And they were like, you know, I talk about being wallet friendly. They were pricey. Um, so I have to like take care of all that and I don't know what I'm going to do. Eventually I'll get back to that store. Hopefully it's just not near me anymore at all. Um, so I really want to finish that shawl because I would so love to wear that shawl. Plus I never finished my, um, <laughs> oh my gosh, my Road to Rhinebeck shawl that um, Mina Phillips designed for um, Rhinebeck this past fall and that was like six months ago 
yeah, never finished that one. But I, when I packed up my office, I saw it and I was like, I gotta work on you. So I did keep, um, a lot of my stuff like works in progress set aside so that I can, um, kind of get back into doing them. But I've left them for so long that it's like, I hope I remember where I was. I hope I left like kept really good notes. Also my, um, comfort fade Cardi. I do have it with me. Um, it's not packed away, but I haven't been able to get back to working on it yet. Cause just stuff is crazy, but I was going through some of my stuff today. Like it was so sad to pack up my pretty little office and all my yarn. I had so much yarn to pack up that, um, some of my yarn, I ended up doing this. And if you're like the, um, the fiber police, just turn away. Um, I don't know if this is good or bad, but I use these, um, <laughs> the Ziploc space saver bags. This probably weighs, I'm very bad at gauging how much something weighs, so maybe like a, a new baby, like 10 pounds, 8 pounds, probably like 10 or 12 pounds. It's heavy, and it is full of yarn, um, but I grabbed this one, oh, it's got some, I just realized there's some fabric that's cut out there for a quilt that I was supposed to make years ago, it's been following me around for years, but I have some um, Canadian, is it? Oh, it's Patton's Classic Wool in a Worsted Way. It's a golden color. I got it from um, the Spinrite uh, tent sale last August, and I got like a, a big pack of it, and I'm going to be making a, um, a hoodie for my little girl, but it's in here. So I did grab that from our storage. Um, so I have something else newer, different to work on. But I don't want to start too many projects without finishing all my other stuff, but <laughs> I just thought it would be fun to show you this bad boy. Yeah, that, this is what I'm working with here. I like, I, uh, it's crazy. I can't wait to get squared away and more settled and stuff, but, um, I'm getting there. So I no longer have an office, but I'll make the most of it. And maybe it'll force me to be more monogamous, finish stuff more, knit faster. Um, I, I was actually thinking about that today. I'm so grateful and I'm so lucky that I have the husband that I have because he we built our business and it's his business, but I've helped him out a little bit. We've built it from ground zero, like from nothing. And now it's, it's pretty good. It's, it's going well, you know, we still, we're not where we would like to be, but, um, we're, you know, it's, it's, it's going well. It's, it's, um, successful. It's, it's getting there. You know, we're only like going four years into it right now. So, um, you know, I think it's doing, it's done pretty good getting where the goal, the end goal was, or not the end goal, but a goal. So anyway, that aside, I don't work. Um, I haven't worked for a while, which is kind of hard. Excuse me. I'm sorry. It's kind of hard for me that I haven't worked. Um, cause I, when I was single, obviously I worked, I supported myself, but that was the first time I had worked in years. Another that, that is something that I kind of keep private, but I am not like trying to hide it or anything. Anyway, that aside, doesn't matter. I worked for a few years when I was single and, um, before I met, before I met my husband and, you know, I enjoy working, but I don't really have like, I've got skills. I can work. I'm a good worker, but it's hard to get a job when you're not like, you don't have a career, I think. So I haven't really, really worked. And it's hard for me to, to not feel useful because I kind of don't feel useful, but my husband doesn't think that at all. He's like, you do this, you do that, you do this, you do that. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm a lot of the, uh, I'm a lot of the brains behind the business, I guess he is too, but like I, you know, we can bounce ideas off each other. And again, it's not really my business, but you know, I'm his wife. And, um, anyway, all that to say, I'm really grateful that I don't have to work. So I have a lot of time that I can, um, focus on stuff I love doing. Like, first of all, like my child, but, um, you know, she's with me, she's home. She doesn't go to preschool. She doesn't go to daycare. She's not in kindergarten. She's home with me. And, um, she's actually going to be four next week. I can't believe it. She's going to be four years old and she's so big. All of a sudden she looks like a kid. She's just a big kid now. Like she's a kid, not a baby. There's no baby left. Um, so I'm home with her and he is also, so we get to do a lot of stuff as a family. We're together as a family a lot, which is really good for us. Um, my husband and I need that to, to be together. Um, we like each other. <laughs> um, 
but I am able to focus a lot of my time on designing and knitting and being creative and doing what I want to do. So a lot of people don't have that and I'm really grateful for that. I have to remind myself to not be lazy and to actually do the stuff that I have such a great, I'm in such a great position in my life to be able to do that stuff. Basically, that's what I'm saying is that. some wine. <laughs> wine Wednesday. Yeah, wine is every day. But um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really happy. Sorry, I hope that doesn't drown me out. That's the heat is, just came on. It's really loud. Um, yeah, so I really need to devote the time that I do have, which is a lot of time. I can never be like, oh, I don't have time for that. I have time for anything, basically. It's just a matter of do I want to do it? How much do I want to do it? How much time am I going to put into it? I have all the time to do this stuff. I just wish I could knit faster. <laughs> and I wish I had a, big, a better attention span because I have no attention span. I'll knit like two rows and I'll be like, ooh, shiny. And then I'll like play on my iPad and look something up online and then I'll go cook something or whatever. So I am actually going to cut out right here and I'm going to go to past me from earlier this morning and tell you about what's been happening in our lives and then I'm going to come back and fill you in on the rest because I thought of more stuff later on today that I didn't mentioned earlier, so I will be right back. Okay, so I said I was going to talk about what's been going on in our lives. My arm is really hurting right now, <laughs> holding up this camera. Um, so in the last podcast, I talked about um, how we were moving, and it was a little unorth unorthodox. That's just how we roll. Um, and we moved. <laughs> April 1st was our moving day, and so we moved up actually the end of March. And, um, basically, so I think you knew that we lived in a big condo townhouse type thing. S sorry. I'm really cold. My nose is running. Um, so we did like 1100 or, I don't know, 1400 square feet, big house. And we downsized like a lot. <laughs> and if you follow me on Instagram, you might've kind of put it together, but I haven't really posted too much about it. We... Um, a few months ago, back in January, we decided we wanted to move out of our condo for landlord reasons and other reasons and stuff like that. Um, and I'm really sorry if my camera's shaky. We started looking for... Oh, hey, buddy, my cat's... The cat is playing with my, um... Ah! With the, the... The handle on the camera. He almost knocked the camera out of my hand. Hey, buddy, get over here. Um... So we started looking for another apartment or a condo, actually, basically, because where we're, where where we live lived, um, Henry, where, buddy, get over here. Where we lived um, mostly was like condos, like all attached townhouses and stuff like that. That was where, that was basically what we were gonna find. Sorry, and um, we started looking, and we looked at some semi-detached houses, not to purchase, but just to rent. We're not in the position to buy right now, or we weren't in the position to buy. And um, we couldn't really find anything. And we, there's a lot of um, competition, I guess, so we weren't able to even, like, there were other people that got the places before us, or we weren't accepted on the application. It was crazy. So we had a really hard time looking for some, finding something. And we had given our notice for March 1st before we even found a place since we weren't able to find a place, like we're getting into the middle of February, we told our landlord, well, we need till April 1st. And that ended up working out because the people that he had um, agreed to rent to after us, they had to push it off till April also, or, or they or that fell through or something, I don't know. So then we were like, okay, well, this gives us, we can relax a little bit and it gives us a little time to find something for April 1st. Things still weren't working out. We still couldn't find something. And then we had this like, idea that we've been tossing around for a while, like probably a little over a year. We talked about this a year ago, but things in life have changed. Um, just the way, like just the way things work out in life have changed. So last year this wouldn't have worked, but this year it did. We've talked about like living, like buying a trailer. And I have been watching some of the, um, the tiny house shows, not like not crazy about it. Cause like we like our space, but it's not about space, it's more about minimalism and clutter, and I'm not like crazy on the minimalism thing, but I do like it clean and neat and clutter free, and that is the complete opposite of what it was and what my life is like. I just want things clean and neat and not a lot of stuff to have to take care of. 
so I can concentrate on more important things like family, fun, going out, my knitting, my creativity, like all stuff like that. So that was something that I was very interested in and to do something like that, the best bet for us would to be living in a trailer. But last year when we were talking about it, which sounds funny, not like a trailer, like a mobile, like a, not like um, a trailer park, like trailer park boys or something, <laughs> you know that show? Not like that, <laughs> but um, along those lines, there's like a lot of like people that I follow on YouTube that are like full-time RVers, which is not something I'm really interested in. I don't like to travel by car and stuff. It gives me massive anxiety. <laughs> but um, anyway, we were talking about it, but we, we were like, well, we're in Ontario. They don't have trailer parks open year round, not trailer parks, but like campgrounds where you can park a trailer. So we didn't really know what to do. Well, come uh, February, we're thinking, we're like, well, we can't find a place. My brother, my husband's brother, has a um, has recently just bought a house that has a lot of land on it, and we love it because it's out in the country, complete opposite of where we lived. Um, anyway, long story short, plans were made. We decided to buy <laughs> a, a park model trailer and park it on our brother in law, on my brother, on my brother in law's, my husband's brother's land. And they were, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law were more than happy to accommodate that. And they're actually doing work on their house. So we're able to be here to help them out um, while we do that. And we're, while we're doing this, we um, are able to save money to buy our own house. And the way my husband's business works is we're really lucky. Um, we're able to hire out some work. Um, and then he's able to expand his business to this area because we are about an hour and a half away from where we were living. Um, we're very lucky that this happened this way. So yes, we bought a, we bought a trailer and we are living in a trailer. Um, and, and again, like I said, it's not like trailer park boys style trailer. It's, not, it's, we took it, it was hideously ugly and we have been renovating it. And as you can see behind me, I'm in my room right now, my bedroom. We turned everything that was brown and we painted it gray and white and it's bright and pretty. And like, we've done a lot of renovations and we've like put in a new floor um it's still not done like the the entire home the trailer isn't to our liking like we've had we still have a lot of stuff we have to get rid of that's just kind of cluttery and hanging around but we're working on it and um we're enjoying it um there's a lot of trial and error it is ontario it is cold like today is four degrees celsius so that's maybe like mid 30s high 30s in fahrenheit so it's cold uh we've been going through a lot of propane to heat the place um but it's still cheaper than paying somebody else's rent um for their mortgage rent for somebody's mortgage um since we can't buy a house right now um so that's our adventure it's interesting <laughs> um we're both lucky that we're both um on board with it and we're both um like able to be compa um, adaptable enough to be able to do something like this. So anyway, we've been, all of that, we've been moving, downsizing, um, getting rid of things, just consolidating, making it so that life is a little bit easier. Um, unfortunately, the weather hasn't been very cooperative. Um, so we were hoping to be able to spend a lot more time outside, but we haven't been able to yet because like, it is gorgeous here. I've showed a couple pictures and everything's like brown right now still and wintry looking, but we are in the country. It's flat land as far as you can see until the trees hit it. Like we wake up and we don't see a building. Where we were, you look out the window, there's a building. There's a, there's another condo. There's a, there's people, people everywhere, everywhere, cars, people, traffic. There's no nature, nothing. And here, like, there's birds. I'm looking right outside the window. There's, that, first of all, that's another thing. There's windows all around, which I love. It's bright, and I love that. There's birds right out on the lawn. Like, and we have birds in the backyard that um, laid eggs. And, like, it's crazy. I've never lived in the country. I'm a city girl, but I don't like it. <laughs> um, I'm getting used to the country. It's weird, like, to drive anywhere. It takes at least 20 minutes <laughs> to get to anywhere. Uh, right now I don't have a washer and dryer, which we will have one soon, but we just haven't purchased it yet. So I have to go out to town to wash, to do our laundry. And it it's a three hour process, like just to get out there, do the laundry, you know, switch it over. And I do my errands while I'm in the area. It's not a big city, even the town that I drive to. There is a city close by and that's great. There's lots of shopping and all the stuff that we need, but it's, you, you kind of have to plan your day. Um, 
it's interesting, but I'm loving the country life, <laughs> and especially when the weather gets better, it's going to be really cool. Um, looking out at the sky, if it's on a cloudy night, you can see stars. You can't see that where we lived, and even where we are here, we're very far from the city, but there's it's still probably not as dark as it could be, but we're very far out there, so the sky is so black at night, and there's so many stars, and I cannot wait until summer. We're putting up a deck pretty soon, so we'll be able to sit out there and... Um, have some wine and look up at the sky and just talk and whatever and it's nice for our daughter to be able to be outside and go outside and play because we didn't have anything before there was like you walk a little bit and you see people or you see concrete and or, or stone walls because the traffic is right there on the road so it protects us from the um the traffic and we don't have that here and the funny thing is excuse me where we live right now we're on a main road so you do hear cars going by, but we're way back out in the um, back of the of our brother's um, land, so it's not very loud, and it's like one truck here and there because they, you know obviously like big trucks like that do deliveries and stuff, and then the people, the residents that live out here. But it's not a lot of traffic. Like we lived on a main road that was right behind our condo, and it's just so different. So we heard. We heard traffic all day long at the condo, and here it's just, you hear birds, you hear, like, I think they're tree frogs, um, I don't even know what, what some of the noises are, <laughs> it's awesome. And in the summer, I guess, because they've only lived here since January, they bought the house in October, but they've lived here since January, because they, they're renovating it, so they had to build an apartment in the house before they, so they could actually live here, because their house is not livable. But anyway, there's a cornfield, apparently, behind us, <laughs> so that'll be interesting for the, um, for the summer. My daughter just fed my cat a chip, so that's cool. She's having chips and hummus right now. Um, so yeah, that's what has been going on, and that's why things have been crazy, and I have all my knitting that I, like I said, I got rid of a lot of stuff that cut out, sorry. All my yarn and all my patterns and all my needles and all my important knitting things have been salvaged and that was still tough because there are a couple things I did have to get rid of but I'm like, no, th these things spark joy for me. So if they spark joy, I'm keeping them. Um, so, but everything is kind of unorganized right now and to be honest, a lot of my yarn is in a trailer, like a, um, one of those trailers that you can hook up to the back of a truck like a moving trailer that we're able to use right now. And so it's just, I don't, again, when I show you my finished objects and my works in progress and my, you know, all that stuff, um, I'm probably going to miss something like right now, all I have that I'm working on, I'm actually very monogamous right now, which is weird. Um, our socks, that's what I've been doing. Um, because everything's just away everything's put away right now which is hard but um i'll get back into it we'll get organized and um i, de I definitely like i always say i want to be um podcasting more so um i think that's all i'm going to talk about right now and like i said at the beginning of the podcast this is probably going to be a really choppy a really choppy podcast but that's okay um that's just how life is, and I'm per sure you don't understand. You you understand, and you don't really care because getting a podcast out by anybody that I watch, I don't care how they do the podcast. I'm just happy to see them. So there's that's Henry. Um, I think that's all for now. So yeah. Okay, so I'm back. So now you know what's been going on. <laughs> we live in a trailer. <laughs> Did I say that enough? No. Um. So. Uh, I, I can't remember exactly what I said this morning, but I kind of explained that we're doing renovations on the trailer. And as you see, um, most trailers, and this one, no exception, they're brown, yellow, gold inside. Ugh. And this one is only 10 years old. You can buy a brand new one and they'll, they'll still just be ugly and brown and dark. And, ugh. So we've painted everything that we can white. We have like a pewter gray, um, wood look floor that we put in, um, white cabinets, like modernized, um, you can see behind me these cabinets, we have food in them, um, just th things are more modern looking, um, it's, it's, well, it's still kind of, it's still kind of, um, a work in progress, <laughs> um, but, you know, it's getting there, we have, it's funny, we put in a, um, 
I don't know, there's just the little things in life that mean certain things to certain people, but we put in a stainless steel stainless steel sink in the, in the kitchen. I'm, I'm, the, I'm looking at the kitchen right there. Um, and we didn't have a, a nice sink in our kitchen in our condo. It was really gross. It was like a, a white fiberglass that was plastic on the outside, so it had burn marks in it from other people, like melting, melted marks from like hot pots and pans from people before us, and it was very porous and so dirty, like disgusting dirty. And I am like, I like things clean and sanitary. And we had a really ugly, um, like the faucet and the handles, and we actually recently just had to replace it because they were broken. My brother-in-law replaced them for us and our landlord reimbursed us. But then we only had that for a couple months and we moved out. So in the trailer, we have, it sounds funny, the trailer. Um, <laughs> I call it our tiny house, but it's not. I'm not even into the really. I'm not really into the tiny house thing. I think they're cool, but not for me. Like I could never climb into a loft bed. I, ugh, I couldn't do that. I need to, like our room is like a bedroom, but it's just tiny. Um, yeah, no tiny house here. But anyway, I'm just looking like at our. We have this stainless steel sink, and we bought um, a, a faucet. That and they were both on sale. And this faucet, it's like a cook's kitchen faucet. It's gorgeous. It's a little overkill for a trailer. Um, at some point, I will get a, um, a, a video, but right now the place is a mess. Like, there's just no storage. We don't have our storage up yet. Like, the way we, where we want to put things, we're still unpacked and, um, or packed. And we, we don't have everything that we want right now that, that's our stuff, some of it's still packed away. So, at some point, I will do, like, a really t a cool tour, a, t a tour of the, of the house so that you can see it because it's really cool and um we basically have what we need we don't have extra space but it's quite spacious in here like there's there's quite a bit of room we've had five people in here at once and um, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law and we've been in here with and, uh, us and our daughter and it's like it's all the space you need um you know what do you need it, it, eventually we we do plan on buying a house but we're not gonna buy like a huge house or anything this thing is easy to clean. I washed the floor today and um, it didn't take very long <laughs> and the entire place was clean. So it's kind of cool. There, there's a few things to get used to. Um, we have running water, obviously we have electricity, we have internet, we have heat, we have... I didn't have a gas stove before. I haven't had a gas stove to, to cook on since like five and a half years ago and um, I love cooking on a gas stove and now I have a gas stove. It's a propane stove and a camper sized stove so there's only three little burners on it. But it's a gas stove, and I'm super excited about that. So, you know, we have all the, the necessities. We have a shower. We don't have a bathtub, but we have a shower, That's which is fine, because my daughter took showers anyway. Um, we have, obviously, a toilet. <laughs> and, like I said, running water, hot running water, hot showers. Like, it's really cool. It's, it's a, definitely a different way to live. Um, yeah, like... I think we just didn't want to be complacent with our lives, and um, you can't be complacent when you live in a trailer because there's always something to do. So we're actually we're looking forward to this summer if it ever comes, or if spring even comes, like the prelude to summer. Um, we're going to be doing a garden, and like I said, my husband's home during the day, and he's excited to do that too. Um, he's not a city guy. He grew up in the country a lot, like they moved around, and um, I did not. I'm a city girl. Only because I've always lived in like suburbia, suburban hell, basically. But that's where I, I grew up. That's where I've lived. Just everything's right there. So being out in the country is a little, a little strange to me. But um, I can, I can handle it. I don't mind it. I, I don't want to be in the city. My husband hates it. He doesn't want to go outside. Um, he doesn't like people. <laughs> you know how everybody says that. Oh, I hate people. Well, he just didn't want to deal with anybody. He's, he's not shy. He just doesn't. He's quiet, and he doesn't really have a lot to say to people. Um, and he doesn't really, he's not, he's a private person, he doesn't want to share his life with other people, so I don't blame him. Um, me, on the other hand, I'm not, <laughs> but I, I also wouldn't, wouldn't go up to my neighbors and start a conversation if I didn't have to. Um, so, so yeah, we're happy, we're happy here, we're happy we made this move, it's definitely something different, it's not, we're not complacent, um, there's always something to do, we can have a huge garden, we're going to be, um, planting that soon. He started digging some of it up the other day because there is no garden here. We're starting from scratch. Um, we're excited about that. We eat vegetables. Um, that's what our most of our diet is. Um, and chips and soda. <laughs> no, 
now. But um, yeah, we might as well plant the vegetables and grow them. I plant, we plant. We have a lot of plans for the summer and for this new life that we are having. And I will be knitting happily. <laughs> and um, yeah. So, and just a really funny story, really quick. My daughter had. Um, so she's almost four, and she is quite the Spitfire. She had sunglasses the other day, and they were, I don't have glasses near me, but you know how like the, she's holding them down so like the, the, um, the lenses are, are down like this, and the, the arms of the glasses are up in her hand, and she's playing around with them in the car, and she's like, oh, I'm knitting, I'm just knitting away, and it was the cutest little thing, and I'm like, oh, do you want, do you want me to teach you how to knit? And she said, yeah, mommy, I want to learn how to knit. So cute, and, um, so, she seems to have some kind of interest in that, so. That's, that's cute. I just thought that would be a fun little story to share. And since I haven't shared anything that I've cooked for a while, um, my I, my mouth is watering for this. And I found this recipe for breakfast sandwiches. I When I did not eat vegetarian or vegan, when I was a meat eater, as they say, <laughs> I always made breakfast sandwiches, like with all the things that I don't eat now, bacon, eggs, and cheese. And I made the best breakfast sandwiches, at least to me. I love them. And I miss those, and I haven't had them for a long time, and I think my um, my arteries are happy that I don't eat them anymore, because <laughs> they were so good, but they were so bad for you. And um, so I recently, I've been like, oh, I really want breakfast, a breakfast sandwich. and. Um, so I've found, I've, I've tried a few different things and then I kind of get sick of it or it's too much work to make because it's breakfast and I want to be able to like have it really quick. Well, I found a recipe and I forget where, but if you're interested, ask me and I will let you know. I just don't want to like look it up on my computer right now and take away from the podcast because I think I'm talking too much already as it is. Anyway, it's marinated tofu slices and I'm not the biggest fan of tofu because it just doesn't taste very good, but if it's marinated and then fried up, like really seared on the outside, on both sides. It is so good. It's marinated in my nutritional yeast and I don't put oil in it, like olive oil they ask you to, but I don't put it. It doesn't need it. It's got water in it. I added some red pepper flakes because um, I didn't have hot pepper sauce. They also, oh, uh, liquid smoke that gives it like that bacony taste. taste. Um, soy sauce just to make it nice and salty. So it's all, um, it's a mi sorry, it's marinated in that, and then I buy the um, fake Canadian bacon ham by um, Eves, it's Y-V-E-S, um, that's the brand name. And I, so I, I fry up the tofu, a couple pieces of tofu, the, um, also the Canadian bacon, and English muffins, toasted, and I, I put it in, I put butter on them and stuff, like, obviously a plant-based butter and I made those sandwiches my husband loves them I oh that's the butter um, I love them I had two of them today I think I might have another one for dinner um, it's so easy to make like super super easy to make and it's just like it's the same as making a breakfast sandwich anyway I think I went on a little too long about that but it was really really good and it doesn't taste disgusting at all it's like pretty awesome. Oh, and you can put maple syrup on the, um, hey, when in Canada, <laughs> you can put maple syrup on the, um, English muffins and it kind of like goes into it. So you have the sweet and the salty taste and it's so good. And that also reminds me one more thing. We went, we found this, well, we didn't find it. We knew about it, but it's this vegan fast food restaurant called Globally Local. I can't say it very fast or I'll just marl through the words. Globally Local. And there's two locations here. Um, it's quite a drive for us because we it's in the city, but it was totally worth it. We we finally went last week because it wasn't near where we used to live, and now it's it's closer to where we live. And it's a vegan fast food restaurant, and it is the prices are the same as like going to McDonald's or Burger King, but you can have the burgers the burgers there. And my husband got three burgers, <laughs> it's three different kind of sandwiches. I got one, and they, we got fries. And we kind of sampled all of them and they have um, such good food and it, it didn't cost much it, it didn't cost any more than going to um, like like I said to any fast food restaurant and it tasted way better I can't say that it was healthy because it was probably a little you know it, it was pretty greasy a lot of it but it was better like healthier than like eating like dairy or an animal animal meat um, no offense to anybody but 
we all know it's not healthy for us. Um, so yeah, it was very enjoyable. And I said, we need to go there like every week, but they also have breakfast sandwiches, which is funny because that day was the first day that I made my own breakfast sandwiches. And so when we were there, we got some sandwiches to go cause they do breakfast all day. So we got some and they were very comparable to what I made, which was awesome. And, um, and that's a one thing, like we don't, we're not vegan to be cool. I know, I feel like a lot of people are vegan to be cool. Like we're on a lot of vegan pages on Facebook and groups and stuff. And it's just like, it's not cool being vegan. It's not cool at all because there's a lot of stuff that we miss out on. We love going out for breakfast and you can't really do that unless you want to spend a fortune on some fancy something and you're still not getting what you want. And like, I don't crave eggs and bacon. I don't, but there's something about going out to breakfast that is like, it's just fun. I love breakfast and it's like, well, that's the best. I know some people don't like it, but I love it. And I think most people do like breakfast. So we were really happy to find that place. And it's near um, a hotel that we used to go to in the city. Um, and we wish we had known that the restaurant was right there because we would have gotten breakfast right there. But now we know if we stay out at that hotel, if we get sick of being in the country and we go to the hotel to be in the city. Um, and yeah, so I don't think they have any other locations anywhere else, but I know in other parts of Canada and in the U.S. and obviously in other countries that there are a lot of vegan restaurants popping up here and there and fast food too. So it's great. So we're not vegan to be cool. We're vegan because we don't want to hurt the animals, but we still want really good food. And, um, yeah, we found that and I've discovered like cooking those breakfast sausages, which I think now that I keep talking about it, I want one so bad. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to finish. Well, no, I'm not going to finish up my wine. Some of that yummy deliciousness. And then um, I am going to go probably make a sandwich <laughs> and just hang out a little bit for the rest of the night until my husband gets home because um, he did have to work tonight. Um, sometimes he's got to manage the business. and But I'm probably going to be like just watching stuff on Netflix or whatever. But oh, um, that reminded me. I also wanted to share. We started watching um, Lemony Snicket's series of unfortunate events on Netflix. Um, I know Netflix in Canada is a little different than in the U.S. Um, I'm not sure how different, but I think that's a Netflix show, so it should be on in the U.S. too. But it, we started watching it. We, we've only watched a few episodes now, but what an awesome show. It's very different than we normally would like. Like, I probably wouldn't watch it by myself, but we do watch it together. And it has um, Neil Patrick Harris and Patrick Warburton. Am I getting the names right? Yeah. And they kind of make the show. They're awesome. And it had Joan Cusack in it. I don't know if she reappears again, but really good cast. And the kids are um, cute actors, too. They, they do a good job. And um, the cast is amazing. Like, the actors are outstanding. And it's a really weird show, and I love it. Makes me want to read the books. I never read the books or the book or whatever, but um, I did see the movie a few years ago. But anyway, we've, we've been watching that a little bit. Um, and then I just started watching Santa Clarita Diet with Drew Barrymore and Timothy Oliphant, however you say his last name. And ugh, it is funny. It kind of reminds me of, um, if you remember Desperate Housewives, kind of reminds me of that, um, but it's grosser. Gross. But it is funny. Um, I started watching that last night. Anyway. That's what I've been doing. That's what I'm, I've been up to. I've been blabbing way too long, less about knitting in this entire podcast than about anything else going on in my life. So hopefully I will be back next week because I kind of have a little surprise. So, um, or something, not a surprise, just something I want to share with you. Somebody I want to share with you. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching. You can find me below here, um, like all my contact information that you can find me. Instagram, Ravelry, blah, 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 all that stuff. So thanks for listening to me babble on and, um, babble on and on, sorry, that was babbling and, um, I will see you soon. Bye.